Hey guys, welcome back. If I told you Black Room was playable in 2014 hack format, would you believe me? Well, you're about to find out. Blackwing is the best anti-meta deck in hat format. Blackwing is a great stun strategy. It can main deck every floodgate under the sun, like Rivalry, Gosen, Emptiness, Macro, Die-Fi, and Soul Drain. Coupled with the fact that it has free copies of Black Whirlwind, you never run out of steam. That is why Blackwing is my favorite rogue deck for hat format. Let's jump right into the deck profile. To start the profile off, I play free copies of Shura, the Blue Flame. Shura is an integral part in the hat strategy of Blackwing. Seeing as when you keep the other decks at your level by using Floodgate cards, you want a good Blackwing to summon alongside it. So say you have a rivalry of Warlords face up on your side of the field. When you summon Shura and kill their monster and bring out another Blackwing from the deck, there's not that much they can do to protect their life, because if they just set other monsters to eventually drawn out to rivalry, you keep accumulating advantage with the Shura and Whirlwind getting you a search every single turn. So you're really just trying to pin down your opponent with your Blackwing effects and accumulate advantage over a few turns and use these Floodgate cards to slow the game down. You just grind them out of cards eventually by using your Whirlwind along with your Blackwing effects. And for this reason, Shura is the best Blackwing in hat format. I'm not playing something like Sirocco because there's not a single mirror match in hat, nor am I playing Vayu to complement the Sirocco. Sirocco also has the issue of when you go first, you can't summon him. So if you just have Sirocco and Whirlwind, he's just dead in your hand. Sirocco is 2k, so you can actually attack over a face down armor, but that's not really what you're trying to do. So I decided to play zero copies of Sirocco and thereby zero copies of Vayu and just play as a streamlined deck, similar to gadgets, where you just want to summon a monster every single turn and get a surge with Whirlwind. For the other Black Wings, I play two copies of Bora the Spear. So unlike Edison, the piercing effect does not really matter since hat format is now a life-based format. It's more so about advantage. But Bora is still a special summon that's 1700 and allows you to search Sephiroth with Black Whirlwind. There's some neat place with Sephiroth where you can bounce back your rivalry of Warlords and make a rank 4 of your choice. I play three copies of Kalut, so you still want some amount of Blackwing monsters that you can draw into a normal summon and get a search with Whirlwind. And this becomes a lot better in hat format seeing as you have more search targets. Then I play three copies of Blizzard the Far North. Again, similar to Kalut, Blizzard is a lot better in hat, seeing as your Whirlwind can search you more cards, so you don't have to just add a value to your hand. The limited copy of Gale. This card could probably have been at three in hat format, but unfortunately it was still limited to one. And for the new Black Wings, I play one copy of Gladius the Midnight Sun and one copy of Feroshi the Squall. So both of these are like Bora and Gale, being able to special summon to your field when you control a Black Wing but you can only control one for Midnight Sun, so he's slightly worse. These two allow you to make easier Synchro plays and Exceed plays. And then I decided to main deck two copies of Max C, just to slow down the combo decks when you go second, so you can more easily deal with their field. I'm not maining free of this, because there's enough Floodgates in my deck to slow the deck down, so I only want Max C when I go second in game one against a combo deck that opened the combo, but I don't really want to see this card against Prophecy or Gear Gia or any control deck really. Even against Mermail, Maxi is kind of bad because you win those games by flooding them out, not by stopping them from playing turn one and then win on the crackback. Because Blackwing is a control deck, so you want to stop them from making a too oppressive field. The Blackwing deck does not win in one turn, so Maxi in them is not the same as in Modern or in any of their combo decks. Now for the spell cards, I play three copies of Black Whirlwind. This is the reason to play Blackwing in Hat. You get to play three copies of this card, which is absolutely absurd. Being able to search a new Blackwing every time you summon one. This card is even better in hat format than Edison because you have cards like Gladius, Orochi, and Sephiroth, which all make Black Whirlwind that much better. If you have a Sephiroth in the graveyard, you can bounce back a Blackwing and then normal summon it again to get an additional search. And these two are just special summons that you can search with pretty much any normal summon of Blackwing because their attack stat is so low. This card allows you to make Armades, which kills hands. And this card allows you to make Ghost Trick Alucard to destroy face down armors. For the other spells, I play three copies of Potter Duality. Duality is really good in this deck, being able to dig you faster into Black Whirlwind along with the monster to pair with it, or just your Floodgate card so you can make sure your opponent cannot play on their next turn. Duality just helps you find your pairs in this deck. You want to see Whirlwind with a monster, with a Floodgate, or additional trap cards to protect it. And then to boost the consistency even higher, I play three copies of Upstart Goblin and one copy of Alara Darkness for my draw cards. So in Edison format, I don't play Upstart Goblin because there, Blackwing is much more a damage-based deck. 
Seeing as the format is more damage based, Edison is a lot sackier because there's a lot more one-ups, which causes some interesting gameplay where you play around your Mirror Force or Torrential until you see it in the graveyard. But this is not really a thing in hat format. You don't really play around singular trap cards to the same extent as you do in Edison. So since hat format is a much more combo-centric format than Edison, you really need to boost up your mid-range decks as well. And Upstart also gets a whole lot better with cards like Duality and free copies of Whirlwind in your deck. Seeing as your Upstart now can see your Duality into Whirlwind turn one. And you don't need to play cards like Legacy of Yadagarasu because there's no Heavy Storm. So there's no reason for you to bluff multiple back rows to play around their heavy. You just want to see your power cards as fast as possible, and that's how you win your games in hat format. And then one copy of Mind Control to take mainly like armors, hands, mermaid monsters. And the Blackwing deck has various levels and tuners, so you can very easily get rid of their monster and not give it back. And for the ever important trap cards, I play three copies of Icarus Attack. So in hat format, Heavy Storm is banned. So people usually set their entire hand to turn one. They just need to have Exitonite in the back of their mind. So usually they have a card like Breakthrough Skill or Fiendy Shane to negate its effect, or Black Horn of Heaven, for example. But people don't play on Icarus Attack because it's only Blackwing and Harpy that can play this card and those decks are not seeing that much play. So you can catch people off guard who are not used to playing against Blackwing in Edison format by Icarus attacking away their entire field. For the Floodgates, I play three copies of Rivalry of Warlords. So the main reason to play Rivalry is because you can use it against rank 4 toolbox decks so they cannot make Exiton to blow up your entire field. Even against Geargag, this card is not the end of the world because if you force them to just have Geargag and X and loop those resources, you can usually grind them out with just a Whirlwind and your Blackwing engine. And against the Soul Charge decks, if you go second against, say, Sylvan or Mermail, you can use this card to break apart their entire field if they don't play around it. So Rivalry can both be a floodgate to slow down the game, but also a board breaker. So it's not like Vantis Emptiness, where you preemptively have to use this to stop what you're playing. You can go second and Rivalry away their field as well. And then the two aforementioned copies of Vanity's Emptiness. So Vanity's Emptiness is really good when you have a Black Whirlwind coupled with some Blackwing monsters to search additional monsters and just beat them down. It also allows you to slow the game down and force the combo decks to play at your level. Then two copies of Breakthrough Skill. So Breakthrough is better than Fiend Shane because you can use this in the graveyard to stop artifacts. Moral Attack can be quite rough for this deck to deal with seeing as it can pop your Black Whirlwind. So just having Breakthrough Skill to negate their effect is really nice. One copy of Solemn Warning, and one copy of Compulsory Evacuation Device. For the extra deck, I play one copy of Ghost Trick Alucard, mainly to deal with face down armors, but also to hit their back row. One copy of Ice Beast Seraphine. So the reason why I play this card is because it's a Wing Beast, so you can make it under Rivalry. One copy of Master Key Beetle to protect your Floodgates. Even with a face up Rivalry, you can use Sephiroth's Delete to bounce it back to your hand and then set it, make a rank four, and then protect it with Key Beetle. One copy of Lavalval Chain. You rarely use the Foolish effect, but you can use the effect to stack a monster on top of your deck to make sure that you draw a Blackwing monster. One Black Chip of Corn to make hands miss timing. One copy of Exitonite. One copy of Diamond Direwolf to destroy cards like Royal Decree. His effect can also destroy a Wing Beast monster on your field, so you don't need to kill him off just to kill a card. You can destroy a Blackwing monster instead. One copy of Abyss Dweller. One copy of Number 101 Silent Honor Arc. For the Synchros, one copy of Armades to kill hands mainly, but also to attack over cards like armor and not lose to battle traps. One copy of Vulcan the Divine. He's the best six star Synchro and you can use his effect to bounce back cards like Black Whirlwind to play around Ice Hand. One copy of Armor Master. This is the only winged beast Synchro I play so you can make him under rivalry and you can use him to stall against hands. One copy of Beals of the Diabolic Dragons. Again, another good card to make against hands and some of the control decks that cannot out him easily. One copy of Scrap Dragon and one copy of Leo, the Keeper of the Sacred Tree. Leo is also very good against hands because they cannot target him with Fire Hand. For the side deck, I play two copies of Effect Veiler. This is against the combo decks. You could play DD Crow instead, it just depends on what your metagame looks like, seeing as you can also use this card against cards like Exitonite and whatnot. But I prefer Veiler over Crow because you can use this card to protect your field. The third copy of Maxi against the Super Combo decks. One copy of Dark Hole. This comes in going second, where you want to make sure to deal with their established field, or to make sure you destroy cards like Yogi Armor. One copy of Dimensional Fisher. Three copies of Mystical Space Typhoon. 
MST is very good against Sylvans because you can hit their field spell, but you need it to destroy cards like Royal Decree so you don't get flooded out. For some more floodgates, I side one copy of Soul Drain along with one copy of Macro. This gives you three powerful floodgates to side against the graveyard heavy decks. One copy of Eradicator, seeing as it is limited to one. I don't side this card in against Gear Gear because they play cards like Wiretap to punish Eradicator. But this card is very good against decks like Spellbook where you can call spells and just win the game. Two copies of Wiretap, not necessarily to stop their traps, seeing as trapping Black Wings isn't great when you got on a search off of Whirlwind, similar to how it is in Edison format. But I really want to Wiretap their Wiretap when they Wiretap my Icarus. You can also use this card to hit their engine place by negating Gear 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 against the Gear Gear deck. And then two copies of Memory of an Adversary. So the Blackwing deck struggles quite bad against hands. So when you have a Black Whirlwind with Boar turn one, it's a great opener, but any hand immediately destroys this. So having a memory of an adversary to banish their hand, getting it and then make an exceed play is very good. I hope you guys enjoyed my take on Blackwing for hat format. There are plenty more decks to come, so stay tuned.